Imagine you're on a ship in the middle of the night. The wind is gusting about 50 kilometers an hour, and the helicopter pilot comes down and says, there's no way we're going up in that tonight. It's just too dangerous. Everyone groans with frustration because you've been tracking an illegal fishing vessel for a couple of months now, and you're unable to get close to it. Every time they see you on the radar, they turn off the lights. So it's like no evidence, no case. Fast forward six months, and this time the pilot is running around the back of the ship, getting his virtual cockpit ready, setting up a ground station. and Everyone's excited as they launch this drone off the back of the ship into the night. About two hours later, just after dawn, the drone returns and lands on the back of the ship. Everyone cheers and claps, because what it's been doing is streaming back video evidence of these light ships they're called, what they do is they put these big lights around the ship at night, and they attract all the fish, and then they net them all up, which is damaging our oceans. Everyone jumps for joy because they finally got some evidence and were able to use this in the court system to outlaw the use of these light ships. My name's Patrick Whedon, I'm the managing director of the Scout Aerial Group, and we specialize in what we call remote sensing, or scanning the earth from a distance to obtain information about it. What type of scanning? We, we do all sorts. We collect thermal imagery or multispectral imagery. We do infrared. Um, we even collect gas samples in, for blast technology. Then we use special algorithms or software packages that turn those, all that data into a meaningful visualization and allows us to see things that we otherwise would not have been able to see. I want to talk about a bit of a hot topic at the moment. So when I say the word Tesla, what comes to mind? Is it electric cars? Is it batteries or is it space? Um, everyone tends to link Elon Musk with Tesla. But when I hear the word, I think of uh, Nikola Tesla, who was a bit of a mysterious scientist. Um, but he contributed to things like TV, radio, remote control, radar, and X-ray. Imagine a life without Xbox or Game of Thrones. In all seriousness, imagine a life without medical X-ray. I'm not saying that the human race wouldn't have survived without it, but we would definitely be in the dark ages. We use these drones as tools to innovate. Uh, we do all sorts of things like mapping and modeling. Um, we do asset inspections in hard to reach places. Um, we do film and video, and then we also do novel things like the anti-poaching or even gas detection, where we, at a blast site, they blast and we actually fly through and collect gas samples. And that allows us, for the first time ever, to know what, exactly what's going on in a blast site. When we talk about the benefits of using these drones, we talk about the three Ds. If the, if the job is dull, dirty, or dangerous, we would rather put a drone in, in harm's way than a human being. Um, they've really helped us to innovate and keep moving forwards. And, and every step of the way, we're learning. We, we step, we learn, and we continue moving. Now, when we talk about these things like robotics or drones, automation, 3D printing, new battery or energy sources, it's all the hype at the moment. Um, if someone had told me six years ago I'd be working in all of these disciplines, I probably would have laughed at them. We started a company to film extreme sports, and now we are launching drones off the back of ships. We are using them for forensics to find graves. We're doing all these crazy things that we never thought was possible at the time. And when I started, I didn't have all the answers. I didn't know who knew about drones. There was no one out there that we could turn to and go and say, how do we do this or how do we do that? Because it was simply unknown. So we had to become a sort of solutions-focused company and teach ourselves along the way. We use 3D printers, which are essentially robots, to build prototypes for our drones which we then automate, and they use new energy sources. Um, it, I, I could never have known all of these things, and I met some amazing people along the way that taught me every bit that I needed to know, but I had to take that first step. Now I want to talk to you a bit about adversity, or the ugly brother to success. It doesn't all come easy, and there's been times I've wanted to pull my hair out or walk away from it all stress, anxiety, pressure. But what separates innovators is the way that they look at adversity and how they respond to it. You get to choose how you react and how you react will determine your outcomes. We once, or think about a, a story of, you might be on your skateboard or your push bike and you, you, 
you cut a car off or cross a road, um, he's likely going to get a bit angry. And you get to choose how you react there. You can wave him off and say, get out of here. Probably not going to be the best outcome. Or you can say, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. But what that demonstrates is that we actually have the ability to react. And how we react will determine the outcome or shape the outcome. But it all starts up here. We had a client once who just didn't pay, wouldn't pay for a long time. There was all sorts of excuses and uh, he was getting quite defensive. And I thought to myself, I could get angry or I could go to the legal battle, or all sorts of things. And then I thought about it and I thought, he really must be in a bad position if he can't afford it or it's not a big sum of money. So I called him and I said, listen, don't worry about it. When you have the means to pay us back or you can return the favor, that'll be more than enough. We received the, the money about a week later and, and a bottle of wine to say sorry. So it, it just really shows us that there's always a solution somewhere. We have to learn to look for one in a roundabout way. Now, Elon Musk from Tesla failed many, many times before he found his success, but he doesn't see it as failure. He sees every step as a learning process. So sometimes we don't know what to do for the next step, but that first step will teach us what we need to know. Then, as is most of the case, we look back and go, okay, now I understand why I had to do that. We once, we worked on a, a drone similar to this, but it had all sorts of special sensors and for, for a big client of ours. And it had been about two years in the making and we were due to go out to site and test it all. And so I thought, we had, we had done all of our tests and trials, we were ready to go, and the afternoon before I thought, let me just go out and do one more test. So I took it out to a test site at about four in the afternoon and put it up in the air and put it through its paces. Everything was going very well. I brought it down into a loiter to pattern and then I put the nose down and I wanted to do a quick fly past and just make sure everything was all right. Just as I got it there, something happened. It tumbled in the air and went straight down into the ground exploding into hundreds of pieces. I think my world stopped there for a second, and I thought, why? Why do I do this to myself? I, I had a thousand questions, and I just couldn't understand it. Um, it, it, was, it was hard for me at the time, and the whole way home, I remember driving home thinking, what am I gonna do? I've got these clients that I have to deliver to tomorrow. There's all, all these expectations on me. I just can't understand why this has to happen. Um, we got a team of guys to work all the way through the night and managed to get another solution ready. And by that time, the weather had changed and come in and we couldn't even get out to the site for another four or five days it was, which gave us the time we needed to rebuild. It just showed me, though, that I didn't understand why then, but when I look back, I thought, what if that had happened on site? What could have happened? Who could it have injured? Could we have lost a huge potential contract? So not understanding at the time is all right. Just take the first step and you'll figure it out along the way. Don't be scared of the unknown. Um, we've learned to take on projects that seem impossible at the time, uh, only to realize that we've got the capabilities anyway. It can be pretty scary, but it can also be amazing once you get there. And if you don't like the direction it's heading, you just change, move it yourself. Um, another time, we, this is about five years ago, when the drones were all non-existent, we bought a prototype from Germany, and we, we got it sent here, but it arrived in boxes and plastic bags, thousand nuts and bolts, a few propellers, and some chipboards in German. And we thought, Oof, what are we gonna do here? There was no instruction manual, because those hadn't been developed, and no one really knew how to assemble them or put them together. And at the same time, I'd met with the company and presented to them. And before, I, I was hoping to get some future business from them. But before I left the office, they said, here we go, we've got a project for you. And it was quite a specialized drone. So I did what any sensible person would do, and I said, sure, we can do that. And I remember walking out that office door going, what on earth am I going to do? How am I going to make this happen? Um, I didn't even know where to look to, actually. But I called my brother, my sister, my work friends, and I just said, Phew help me out, yeah. And someone knew someone who put me in touch with a mechatronics engineer who knew a little bit of German. And suddenly, we, after quite a lot of nightmares, actually, we got this all put together, delivered to the client, and we still have that client today, six years later. So don't be afraid, even if you don't know all the answers. Just say yes first and figure out how to get there along the way. 
What if I told you there was no stress in the world, only stressful thoughts? There's always going to be situations that create stress, like being late for work, exams, all sorts of things. But it's never going to go away. The only thing we can change is how we react to it. Whatever you think inside your head, you create in the external world. So why not start thinking about the outcomes you want instead of the ones that you can't control? Train your mind to think a little di differently. When next time you're a bit angry or frustrated or something, I want you to stop and think about me here right now and just fake a smile. So give it a fake smile. And uh, research shows us that if you even fake a smile, it reduces levels of stress. But what I'm trying to demonstrate there is you get to choose in that situation how you react with the smile, and that will determine the outcome. One important thing that really goes hand in hand with mindset is massive action. So you have to take massive action if you want anything to happen. We once built a drone, it was part of an internship program, and we put one together with no aerodynamic modeling, no mathematical calculations, and no design concepts. We just said to the interns, here's everything, put together what you like. And over the course of six or seven weeks, it started to develop, and people just did things what they thought looked nice. But they were, it was not really meant to fly, it was just a building experience. And uh, one day we thought, well, let's put it on a catapult and just shoot it into the air and see what happens. I think everyone thought it was going to come smashing down and it was going to be quite interesting to see. And we put it on this catapult with no power, no motor, nothing, just to do a glide test. And we shot it into the air and it just carried on going and going and going. It wouldn't come down, actually. So right there and then we realized that sometimes done is better than perfect. Um, too many times we sit there waiting, going, oh, I can't do this, or I can't do that, I don't know how to do this. But just taking that first step and doing it will lead you to a platform that will open up many other opportunities for you. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. I love this quote because it forces us to think a little bit differently or to think outside of the box. Too many times when we have a deadline, we just go straight into the project and just start chopping without actually looking for the other solutions that are surrounding us. We don't sell drones at Scout Aerial, we sell solutions. People come to us with all sorts of unique problems and we just happen to use the drones as a tool to solve those problems. There are a million ways you can do anything, you just have to figure out what works for you. There's actually a drone that cuts down trees now as well. Uh, it's got a big chainsaw on it, and that's probably been developed from someone who thought, oh, I don't want to go and walk up there and chop this down. So they've thrown a chainsaw on a drone, and they just fly through the trees and chop it down. So where, where will it end with the drones? We don't know. But we do know that if you want to be the best at anything, you have to go the extra mile. We got a call not so long ago from a client who desperately needed a, a mine surveyed, and it was a long weekend. It was a Thursday afternoon they called and said, we have to have this mine surveyed. No one else will help us. We don't care what it costs. We need to get it done. So we said, sure, we can help you with that. We got a team out there and surveyed the mine, handed it all over. No, no contracts, nothing. We just said, here you go. And they managed to deliver it. And it sort of got me thinking then, is, is, is thinking about your best friends. Or if you think of your best friend right now, you'll probably smile a little bit thinking of all the nonsense you've got up to. See that over there? Um, but now, now I want you to think of what you would do for a friend if they needed a lot of help, or they desperately needed your help. How far would you go? What would you do for them? Almost anything. So why do we have to treat that differently to how we will do something for our clients or customers or whoever else it's going to be? And if you have that attitude, you'll always come out on top. It's a very simple tool. Sometimes it does turn out to be a lot more extra work, but other times it doesn't. And what we find is that people will always start talking about you. Word of mouth advertising is worth more than any multi-million dollar marketing campaign. Um, there's a, a story, someone actually phoned me to tell me about it and said, oh, there's this great optometrist in Brisbane, um, and while you wait for your prescription to be done, the hour or two hours that it's done, they give you movie tickets or a coffee voucher. And it's something that's so small but just going that little extra mile will get people to start talking about it, like, like I'm doing right now. When I started out to build 
a global brand, I didn't know how to do it. I knew what I wanted to do and I stepped into it. I used drones as a vehicle to sort of put me out there. And I started to meet all of these people along the way that helped me shape what we're doing today. If I can pass on anything that I've learned, I'm hoping to do that. And when I have to start thinking of innovation or what's important for it, I know that a positive mindset or positive thoughts lead to a positive mindset. That helps us get through adversity or manage it in a better way. And um, it's a simply a process. Uh, adversity is a process. When you learn how to do something over and over again, it becomes fairly easy, or easier at least. Um, I always try to do a little bit more. At the end of every day, I say to myself in the office, just one more thing. It can be anything. One email or a big proposal or something, but every time I want to go home or do something, I say just one more thing. And over the course of 365 days, those little things really, really add up. And it's not very difficult to do. If anyone here today or any other time has an idea that they're not sure about how they can launch it or do anything, please come and talk to me and I'll try and help you where I can. After all, a journey does start with the first step. Thank you.